Today I'm gonna to cover the universal function SQL report type, but I'm gonna do something that you might not be super familiar with. Most of you have probably used the SQL report function for a query window, and obviously it's the best way to go. It has a lot better formatting than the SAP formatting and a lot more options. But this is a way that's buried in some of the Boyum training functions that I wanted to highlight that I actually use a lot. So here we go. My name is Mike Taylor, AKA Battleship Cobra. Thank you guys so much for all the thanks. I really appreciate it. Remember, if you don't come to YouTube that frequently, you can click the notification bell below and it'll give you an email every time I make a new video. So if you don't come to YouTube that often, you can get a notification so you don't miss them. So we're gonna start with an AR invoice and I'll show you an example of a scenario and then how I'm gonna be using the SQL report. So say you wanna do an invoice, but in this case, the invoice is open so you could copy it to a credit memo, but what if the credit was already uh, paid for and you need to make a manual credit? Well, it's annoying if you're gonna copy that, you know, what do you do? Do you right click, you can copy the table, paste it into a credit memo. A lot of companies do this a lot. So you wanna go back to the invoice and then you just wanna make a manual credit. So what I do is I have a manual credit button that uh, does a few different things. So let's just watch it here. So it kind of pings around, but what you're left with is an SQL report, but the SQL report allows you to check which ones you want for the credit. You can search the rows if there's a lot, and you can also edit the number of quantity. So you can click, 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 you can choose the ones you want, and then edit the number of quantity. In this case, I'm gonna draw everything in, you can select all. So this is actually an SQL report window box function. So this is really, I think, underused you can use this in order to put the information back into this particular grid. So if I click select, you can see it put all the information back in there. So some people were asking me about looping in order to make something like this. Well, you can do this and it just goes boop and puts all that information. I don't know how it does it, but it can do a lot more and seemingly a lot quicker than doing a loop. I would again, avoid loops as much as possible. So we can break that down and look at the universal functions. And um, some of the other things I'll, actually I wanted to point out here in the accounting, this actually, you know, you see it jumps around a little bit there, but you can see reference document. It actually links it to the original document, which is neat. And I put some uh, manual remarks there. And so this actually goes a step further so that it will uh, make it referenceable from the original document, even though it's manual. I didn't do a thing to copy freight or additional expenses. You can do that. You could translate that into rows, whatever you can do with your query. You could take your RDR3 rows and convert them into row level credits. Um, you know, you could do your without quantity modifications there if you wanna do without quantity posting with quantity posting. Um, and then you can just paste that right back in. So I didn't do any of those things, but you can use this as a framework. So let's look back at our invoice a little bit. So we have these buttons. I have the relationship map and the fit column width function buttons. I was against the function buttons for some reason initially, but I think they're actually really easy to use and I use them a lot now. So I'll do relationship map and fit column width. So this is the same as right clicking, clicking relationship map. Fit column width is you know, if you have all these columns like this, it's really easy. You just go view fit column width and then it'll size everything properly for you. It's really handy fit column width. You can use that almost any form. So it's easy to go boom. If things get uh, kind of mushed up there, you can do that. In this case, we're doing the manual credit today, right click. You can always go to edit function buttons, but a nice thing on the newer versions here is you can go right to this button's universal function directly instead of going to the function button and then to the universal function. So let's take a look at this code. So I tried to document this as much as possible, what I'm doing and why I'm doing this. And I'll put the code below in the video description as usual. So what we're gonna do is we're going on this form, we're gonna run through and I've made this pretty clear, store the BP code. So we're gonna store the business partner code and we're gonna store the customer reference number. You can store anything you want really here, just use other, other stores um, and then that'll be easy for you to just use them for anything. Again, this is very flexible. I just did it as kind of a standard way of doing it. Use your activate, so you open the credit memo, freeze the credit memo, set it to an item type document, so you don't have a service or an item type. Some A lot of people use service type credits, so you wanna make sure you set it to item type. Set your BP code, set your customer reference number. I unfreeze it. 
I think I was experimenting with this and if you don't unfreeze it, it doesn't, this part doesn't work well. Maybe I'm wrong here. I tried to reduce it ping ponging around, but it's just how it goes. So you unfreeze the form. So those just appear. Click the accounting tab because I think when I tried to click the, maybe I could activate 498. You could probably improve on this too, but again, it does what it needs to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click, uh, we're gonna open up credit memo. We're basically copying this over. And remember, the macros are like anything a human can do. Um, the macro can do too, copy this over here, boop. Then we're gonna click accounting, then we're gonna click referenced. Okay, so this reference document, if you don't know how it works, I'll show you in a second. So then you go here, uh, you go to the last one, you set it to type 13, which would be credit memo. Then you set it to the document number, which is stored in store 99. So that would be this. Then what I'm doing is I'm setting, this is just uh, some sort of remark that I want for there. Boop. Okay. Then I unfreeze it, click update, okay. So that saves it, close the reference window, uh, reactivate the credit memo form. So you have to be aware of what you're doing as you're going through this. Like as you're trying to affect different forms, you have to switch which form is the active form that you're working on. So I reactivate this one. Then I switch back to the contents tab uh, on this one. And then I'm clicking to switch back to the contact. Then I unfreeze it. Then I actually run this universal function here. So the, what's cool is the selection is from this. So 164, we're going to go back one. So this is pretty straightforward. I'm saying the big, the big thing here are these two things down here. Select data target, which is this. And I'll explain that in a second. And then also first column is a selection checkbox. So if you use this, this allows you to select the checkboxes for what you're going to use and then have the data targets. So this can be uh, 3810. So the first, it skips the first one, but it's going to put the first row column, sorry, it's going to put into 3810. And if you know, 38.1 is always the item code. View system information down at the bottom. Two. You're just going to skip it. You could just see you put a semicolon, skip it. It doesn't do anything. The third one, quantity, it's going to go to 38.11, which should be the quantity. Yeah. Then it's going to do the next one, the discount percentage as 15, and then it's going to do the price as 14. So you can see all those. So you could target those. It doesn't have to be in a row. I think it can be anywhere you can use them. Usually it's for a grid, but you could do this and then have the macro just automatically put that in there. You don't even have to give the uh, give the user... Um, the ability to actually select. In this case, I think it's good to let the user actually select because maybe they don't want to be crediting everything or maybe they want to have a kind of a selection, uh, part of the selection process. So I do everything and then let the user select it at the end. But you can actually use that to move grids and modify grids around too. Okay, so I use this at, uh, this is the secret here, where docnum equals at star 99. And then I was messing around with having like quantities not zero, or you could say open quantities not zero, or you could change this to filter it for whatever you want. Of course, you can use all your regular filters, like I use to be able to search on the item code, and I'll be able to edit with the format wizard if I want to change the quantity. So you can use the wizard here. This is all covered really well in the uh, Boyum stuff. Uh, the thing I think that was kind of missed was, not missed, but um, something that I just wanted to highlight was being able to use these selection columns to be able to select into another grid. It's extremely useful. Okay, so that's the combination. That's what you get here. And then that's what, uh, and then this down here gives you the selection of the data target. And then this will give you the first column. I'm not sure if you can, I, I'm guessing you can mix grid and regular header stuff. I'm guessing, I haven't done it, but um, anyway, pretty nice. Use it all the time. So let's take a look at that again. Doing this, manual credit, does its thing there. Boom, you select this, you can select which ones you want. Puts just the two there. And um, that's about it. So I think you can use that in a new and kind of innovative way. 
use it in an automated way to do a query to convert, uh, you know, to, to make a query copy items from a grid to another grid, or use it to allow your customer to like, they could say, you could even put something on here like add batteries, and then it goes boop, and then it pops up just a list of batteries. And if you have your selection target, it'll just go to the end of that contents list. You could have, you know, you could say add, you know, you can obviously, you know, do your loop or just add a specific thing to the end, but you can always say like customer reorder. You could say do a customer reorder and you can say what have they ordered in the past and you can rank them based on what they've ordered and you go one, two, three, cut, paste in there. There's so many different things you can do. It's very, very quick to, uh, to put those in there to either use it automatically or to have the user do the selection themselves. Because I could use the macro and just had it like uh, push those three in there if I wanted and just did it that way. So I just wanted to highlight that checkbox for the SQL report universal function. Use it in your macros, use it manually. Very useful, use the data target field there so you can put them, skip columns if you want. You could uh, get really creative with that. It's very useful, I use it all the time and I thought I wanted to highlight it in case you didn't watch all the advanced SQL reporting uh, thing. There's so many little nuggets of information from the Boyam training videos that I think um, they're really, they're always worth watching. And I, I, I've, as much as I know, reading all the documentation, I've learned so much and experimenting with it. I'm always pleasantly surprised with Boyam that like, if you think you could do something some way, like using the stores inside of an SQL report, um, that's something that's cool. You might say, oh, it doesn't look like it would probably work, but it actually does work. And I've been more often than not pleasantly surprised that uh, their keywords and their coding and their macro stuff is very consistent. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. See you next time. If you have any video topic sub suggestions, uh, put them in the comments below. Have a good day. Connect with me, linkedin.battleshipcover.com. You can ask me questions there. Bye for now. Make some progress, I can see that they compare I think everyone's against me, maybe